Hello and welcome to this Astranti video for the February 2020 Operational Case Study Exam sitting, where today we are going to be performing a strategic analysis for Lottie Graphite, our pre-scene company. Now our analysis today is going to be undertaken using what is known as the Rational Planning Model, and via this model we're going to aim to give you a better idea of Lottie Graphite's strategy at the present, where Lottie Graphite strategy is likely to be heading in the future going forward. Okay, and then hopefully when it gets to your exams, this sort of strategic base of knowledge that you have developed over the course of your revision should hopefully put you in a better place to make more informed and more competent decisions in relation to the various tasks that you are going to have to deal with when it comes to the actual exam itself. Okay, so to start with in this video, I just want to give us a bit of a sort of reintroduction to the case company itself. You may well have been doing other bits of revision in the last few days, so I just want to make sure we're all up to date with regards to our knowledge on this company. So very briefly, we know that Lottie Graphite is a premium pencil manufacturer that sells a range of of pencil products, both graphite pencils and colored pencils, via a range of third party stores, via business to business deals with things like local authorities and also via its online store. The company is based in Gorland in Western Europe and has been trading since the start of the 20th century, so is over a hundred years old. And to this day, the company remains in the ownership of the founding family who initially set the business up and who initially started trading back in 1902. In terms of the company's financial history, this has been buoyant and we see continued growth and profitability to this day. We're also dealing here with a global brand operating in over 100 countries, employing over a 1,000 staff, and operating a large state-of-the-art production facility in its home nation of Gorland. Okay, so like I mentioned at the start of the video, the model that we are going to use to facilitate our analysis is known as the Rational Planning Model. Now this may be a model some of you have come across previously in some of your previous studies potentially. If you haven't come across the model yet, don't worry as what we're going to do very quickly to start this model is give you a quick overview of essentially what the model relates to. So the model essentially is made up of two main areas of analysis. So we have initially analysis into the business's position now, the current position in which the business is operating. And then we have analysis looking at the future position of the business, i.e. where the business would like to get to in the future. And then the third aspect of this sort of analysis or of this model is essentially the creation of a business strategy. And the business strategy is the way that the business wants to get from its current position, i.e. where it is now, to the position it would like to be in the future. And the best way, therefore, to sort of think about the business's strategy in the context of this rational planning model is to think about the strategy as a bridge, allowing the business to move between where it is now to where it wants to be in the future. And our video today is going to follow the rough structure of this sort of model, of this diagram that we can see on screen. So we'll look at where the business wants to be in the future. We'll look at where the business is now, conduct some analysis here with the various models you can see on screen. And then based on these two areas of analysis, we'll look to develop the business's strategy. And like I mentioned at the start of the video, developing a better knowledge of Lottie Graphite's strategy should really allow you in your exam to make more informed, more accurate decision making in relation to the various tasks you're asked to complete in line with what you know about how the business would like to progress strategically going forward. 
So for example, if you got a scenario or a task in your exam where you're asked to analyze a new product or a new expansion scenario, for instance, that the company is looking to pursue. What you can do is you can think about this scenario in terms of how it relates to what the business wants to achieve in terms of its strategy going forward based on your knowledge from this video. Okay, so we're going to start the video today by looking at the future side of things for the business, i.e. where Lottie Graphite wants to be after implementing its business strategy. Okay, so the first stage of our analysis is to ensure that we fully understand where Lottie Graphite is heading. Okay, and here we can ensure that both the business itself is progressing in the right manner. But also here we can see that the approach the business takes, or we can confirm that the approach the business is taking, is meeting the needs of the various different stakeholder groups that are attached to the business or that have an interest in the business. Okay, so in terms of assessing where the company wants to get to in the future, the first things that we're going to look at are the company's mission and the company's objectives. Now, obviously, we're basing this on the pre-scene and it may be actually that we don't find sort of black and white missions and black and white objectives set out in this document. So what we may have to do here is infer a little bit what we believe the company's mission and key objectives are likely to be based on some of the sort of strategic information we have in the pre-scene and based on our own knowledge about Lottie Graphite. We're then going to move on and we're going to look at critical success factors in relation to the company. And as the name suggests here, critical success factors are essentially things that the business must ensure that it does well, must ensure that it is extremely competent in if it wishes to achieve success going forward. We're then going to move on to look at the really important areas of governance and ethics. Now, in this particular exam, we're dealing with a private company, so the issue of governance isn't likely to be as significant as if we were dealing with a public company. However, the issue of ethics is absolutely vital to your exam. This is one of the most commonly tested topics at all three levels of the case study exam. So understanding some of the ethical challenges that Lottie Graphite faces as a business is going to be really, really important for us to look at. Finally, we're going to take a look at some of the various stakeholder groups that are impacted or that will potentially be impacted by Lossy Graphite's development as a business going forward. Okay, so moving on to the first of these areas of analysis, and we're going to look and see what we can deduce in relation to Chocolate Box's mission. Now, what is a mission? Well, a mission essentially helps to provide a common purpose for a group or for an organization. So let's pause for a minute and consider this in a non-business context. Imagine that you are a member of a football team. When you and your team start a new season, you don't just go into the season, play through all the games and finish the season. At the start of the season, what you would likely do is set out a sort of set of objectives or set out a common purpose that you wish to achieve over the course of the season. So this may be, for instance, that you want to win a particular cup trophy, or it may be that you want to achieve promotion to a higher division, or it may even be something as simple as implementing a particular style of play. And what setting out this sort of common purpose at the start of the season will help do is to gain a level of buy-in from the rest of your team. You all know what it is you are working towards over the course of the season. Now, returning to a business context, this idea is essentially exactly the same here. By setting out a mission, you are essentially providing a level of common purpose for members of your organization and a level, crucially, of focus for the organization's strategy. From a leadership point of view, a mission also helps to provide direction to figures such as directors, allowing them to guide objectives in terms of what the business wants to achieve and also to guide strategic thinking in relation to things like decision making. And with these ideas in mind, if you think about an organisation which lacks a strong mission statement, what this may mean is that the business itself therefore lacks focus and lacks purpose in the work that it does. 
And all this then for means that the sort of the strategic direction of the business, essentially where it is going, what it wants to achieve is likely to be confused as there is no one within the organization who really understands what the business is operating for. Now, Campbell set out the following key elements of a good mission statement. And what we're going to do is we're going to run through each of these key elements and we're going to assess them in relation to what we know about Lottie Graphite and its operations. And hopefully what this should allow us to do is to get an overriding sort of mission about what the company's purpose is and how it's going to employ this in terms of progressing as an organization going forward. So the first of these key elements is purpose. And some of the key questions we can ask in relation to this uh, element are things like why does the organization exist in the first place and for whom does it exist? So essentially what we're asking here is why did the founding fam family behind Logic Graphite initially set up its business or set up their business back in the early 1900s? Okay, so we know that pencils are a fairly necessary product for a range of different consumer groups from uh, children as part of their education all the way through to artists and other professionals. So people like architects, for instance, or carpenters. So we have a very functional product here that the business is obviously catering towards. But what we can also see here is that the company is catering to this sort of consumer demand via a very high quality premium product. Okay, so the business is fulfilling this very functional, functional need uh, for consumers, but it is doing this by attempting to produce high quality, long lasting products that function as well as it is possible for them to function for end consumers. The other question we can ask in relation to purpose as a key element of a good mission statement is what does an organization hope to achieve in the long term? Okay, so we know that Lottie Graphite is one of the five big pencil producers in the world, but we also know that it is the fifth, i.e. the smallest of these big five companies. So we could ask potentially, does the company want to increase its status as a leading provider, maybe even become the leading provider of pencils around the world? The other thing that we can look at in terms of what the company wants to achieve relates to the quality of its products. We already know that the company is a leading quality provider around the world of artist grade pencils. So does it want to extend this sort of quality status to become the leading quality provider of graphite pencils as well? We've also seen how the company has expanded into various new markets around the world with Fellland listed in the precinct as being the latest market the company wants to get into. So again, here we can ask the question, does the business want to continue to expand its brand around the globe and tap into new markets for its products in areas like Fellland and maybe other areas like Asia that we don't specifically get referenced in the precinct? And finally, of course, the business will want to continue to facilitate the growth that it has experienced in recent years. So a growth in revenue generation, a growth in profitability, but also a growth in the business's infrastructure in terms of its production capabilities and its usage of technology. Okay, so the second element of a good mission statement relates to strategy. Okay, so here we're looking at how does the organization compete against the range of businesses that operate in the same market as itself. Now thinking about what we know about the pre-scene, a few things spring to mind here. So the first is a continued drive for product development and a continued innovative culture in the business. There are various examples I can list in the pre-scene about how this sort of innovative culture is evident, both from the expansion of the business's infrastructure and the embracement of things like technology, but also obviously via the development of a range of new products from the Pexico Pencil all the way through to the company's new business venture with Wellies, the cosmetic company. So continuing to innovate and provide customers with new and varied product types, but also improve business processes is a crucial way the organization competes going forward. I think the balance between quality and quantity is a crucial factor here as well. 
So the business competes on quality. We've seen how it has a premium sort of brand. And we've also seen how it is a market leader in terms of quality in areas such as artist colored pencils. So it competes on quality, but it also competes on quantity at the same time. One of the major areas of development in the business in recent years has been within its production facilities, i.e. giving it the capability to produce millions and millions of these high quality pencils every year to sell to consumers. So competing on both quality and quantity is a key part of the business's strategy going forward. And finally, like I've touched upon, the idea of the company's brand, I think, is crucial here. The company's brand is known throughout the world as a sort of premium, high quality pencil manufacturing company. And we've seen the steps that the business goes to from its sort of marketing, but crucially in areas like its production as well, to ensure that it perpetuates this brand and really ensures that it penetrates this brand amongst as many different types of consumers as possible and makes the company's brand, but crucially also its pencil products, as recognisable as possible. So the branding side of things, I think, as well, is a crucial area of sort of competition and differentiation that the business needs to continue to pursue. The next element of good mission statements relates to values. And here we're looking at what the organization stands for. Now, I think two of the main things we can take out match the values that are listed as examples here in terms of quality and innovation. I've talked about these two points quite extensively in relation to the business's strategy. But I think just to reinforce, we can clearly see here how these two key functions are intermeshed in the culture that the business has and the way in which it pursues its operations. Things like retaining production in Gorland are prime examples of this. The business could look to move production to a cheaper production centre elsewhere. But instead, it retains its production in Gorland, with one of the reasons being that it can, of course, maintain the quality of its products in this location. And I think the other key value that we, we very much see throughout the pre-scene is the fact that the business is extremely customer focused in nature. We see several examples in the pre-scene from the development of water-based paints all the way through to production of pencils at the extreme end of the graphite scaling, which really demonstrate to us how aware the business is about its consumers and how it looks to act as part of its sort of strategy and as part of its product development to ensure that it meets consumer needs and protects consumers in terms of things like the quality and functionality of products. And finally here, the fourth key element of a good mission statement relates to a business's policies. And policies are things that people are expected to follow that ensure people act according to defined values, strategy and purpose. Now, we maybe don't see a multitude of explicit policies stated in the precinct, but there are a couple of points that I think we can take here. So firstly, I think the issue of technology is a crucial one for this company as a whole. And I think we see real evidence here of a policy within the company of employing and utilizing new technology wherever possible in whichever areas of the business it is applicable to, to increase the overall quality of the business's outputs and increase the efficiency of their operations. I think the other crucial policy we see here is in relation to the sustainability of the company's raw materials. So in relation to things like beeswax, we see this quite uh, explicitly. But of course, the main example here is policies the company has in place to ensure the sustainability of its crucial raw material, which is cedarwood. So obviously cedarwood has specific properties that are crucial to the quality of the company's end products. And we see specific policies in here, i.e. planting two trees for every tree the, the company cuts down to ensure a continued supply of this product going forward. Okay, so we can see overall how by answering these questions, we've built up a sense of overriding purpose and focus for the business to pursue as part of its strategy. Having watched this sample, we'd like to take the opportunity to draw your attention to a few of the other products that Astranti offer in relation to the case study exams. Now, the first of these is a study text, and this study text is available for all three of the SEMA case study levels. This study text contains 
comprehensive advice on how to pass the relevant level case study exam. This is advice ranging from tips on how the exams are actually marked and what you need to do to get these marks all the way through to actually writing style and other key advice. These study texts are then supplemented by course videos and again these course videos touch on some of the key ideas that you need to abide by, that you need to be aware of when looking to pass your case study exams. For individual sittings, we then produce pre-scene analysis videos. Now these are a range of videos where an expert in the office dissects the pre-scene in minute detail, bringing out some of the key points that you need to be aware of and really giving you a thorough understanding of the company for you to take into your exam. These pre-scene analysis videos are then supplemented by our industry analysis pack. Now you'll be aware of this if you just watched our sample video but essentially what this pack contains is an analysis on the industry behind the fictional case study company. So we look at the industry itself, competitors, things like that, really dig into detail here so you don't have to do this as part of your revision. And then crucially we compare this to the case study company. So what we have here is a video that you've just seen a sample of, but the main thing we produce in this regard is a industry analysis document. On top of these products, we then produce mock exams. So there'll be a range of different mock exams for each case study sitting. And these are designed to be as real life as possible, as close to the real life exam as possible. So we provide not only a range of mock questions, but we also provide comprehensive, detailed model solutions, if you like. So you can compare your answers to w with the model solutions produced by our experts in-house. On top of this, you can then also choose to have the solutions that you create to our mock exams marked and then personalized feedback provided by SEMA qualified accountants. Now on top of all these options, we also offer a comprehensive masterclass. And what this masterclass is really good for is those sorts of people who maybe have decided to, to study for the exam at the last minute, or those of you who just want a sort of comprehensive overview of everything that the exam will cover. And so these are comprehensive recordings which you can either watch live or which you can watch as recordings, covering everything you need to know about the exam. And finally, we do have a lot of confidence in the quality of our material. So if you purchase our full course pack, and if you don't pass your exam, unfortunately, using this pack, then we will offer you a pass guarantee, essentially. We will provide you with free materials for the next course sitting. So all that's left for me to say is once again, thank you very much for watching this video and best of luck in your exam from everyone here at Astranti.